Well, welcome to you. It's uh, Friday the 25th of September and I'm offering morning prayer today. We're commemorating Lancelot Andrews, um, Bishop of Winchester and spiritual writer from the 17th century as a lesser festival and also Sir Guy of Radonez, uh, who I must admit I don't know much about, but who I'm told I read was a Russian monastic reformer and teacher of the faith in 1392. So we commemorate him too. As always, you can follow the liturgy on the Daily Prayer app, uh, or you can find it <coughs> on the uh, on the link if you're watching this um, later on too. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice. Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, on that day at Massa in the wilderness, when your forebears tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, this people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Well, our psalm for this morning is Psalm 31. <clears throat> Normally I'd have a friend, of course, to read it alternate verses, but I'm on my own today, so uh, I'm afraid you'll have to put up with me. Never mind. Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a fortress to save me. For you are my rock and my stronghold. Guide me and lead me for your name's sake. Take me out of the net that they have laid secretly for me, for you are my strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. I put my trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy, for you have seen my affliction and known my soul in adversity. You have not shut me up in the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in an open place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, my soul and body also. For my life is wasted with grief and my ears with sighing. My years with sighing. My strength fails me because of my affliction and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbours, an object of dread to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they flee from me. I am forgotten like one that is dead out of mind. I have become like a broken vessel. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is on every side. They scheme together against me and plot to take my life. But my trust is in you, O Lord. I have said you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. 
Make your face to shine upon your servant and save me for your mercy's sake. Lord, let me not be confounded, for I have called upon you. But let the wicked be put to shame. Let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, but speak against the righteous with arrogance, disdain and contempt. How abundant is your goodness, O Lord, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared in the sight of all for those who put their trust in you. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from those who slander them. You keep them safe in your refuge from the strife of tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his steadfast love when I was as a city besieged. I had said in my alarm, I have been cut off from the sight of your eyes. Nevertheless, you heard the voice of my prayer when I cried out to you. Love the Lord, all you his servants, for the Lord protects the faithful, but repays to the full the proud. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait in hope for the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. <clears throat> so to our New Testament reading, which is continuing our journey through the book of Acts, and today we've, we've reached chapter 18, beginning at the first verse. After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There, he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them, and because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them, and they worked together. By trade, they were tent makers. Every Sabbath, he would argue in the synagogue and would try to convince Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that the Messiah was Jesus. When they opposed and reviled him, in protest he shook the dust from his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then he left the synagogue and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshipper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the official of the synagogue, became a believer in the Lord, together with all his household, and many of the Corinthians who heard Paul became believers and were baptised. One night the Lord said to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent, for I am with you, and no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, for there are many in this city who are my people. He stayed there for a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said this man is persuading people to worship God in ways that are contrary to the law. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews. But since it is a matter of questions about words and names and your own law, see it to yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But Gallio paid no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Cenchre, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he himself went into the synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ah. 
Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord, of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So as we turn to our prayers of intercession today, we're going to be praying for the retired clergy in the Bromsgrove Deanery, among other places. Well, let's bring ourselves now before God in a moment of stillness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the continuing accounts of the early church in the book of Acts. The accounts today of Paul's interactions with various people, including the Jews in the synagogues. The mixed reactions that he received. Lord, as we reflect upon this, we think upon the mixed reactions that the church and our faith continues to receive in the world today from opposition to apathy, interest and opportunity. Lord, we pray that the example of Paul will enable us to be bold and confident in our faith, to share our faith in love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So we do pray for the church, the church throughout the world, particularly those who are persecuted for the sake of their faith. Father, we thank you for all those who proclaim you as Lord and we ask that you would protect those whose lives and livelihoods are in danger because of their faith. And we thank you too for the opportunities that we have to share our faith and to witness to you, not least in these troubling and uncertain times. Help us to Place our faith in you as the rock of our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our archbishops and our own bishops in this diocese, Martin and John, our archdeacons, Robert and Nicky, particularly lifting to you the open conversations that continue to take place across the diocese. As we discern the future for our churches, 
pray that your hand would be upon that process and that through all of it we may discern your will particularly we pray today for the retired clergy of Bromsgrove Deanery we'll give you thanks for the prayerful presence of retired clergy especially in recent months and we ask for God to bless them in this ministry from home at the same time we pray for the diocese of central zambia in central africa with bishop derek gary kamakwamba so we ask that you would bless these peoples today lord in your mercy hear our prayer We're asked today to pray for peace and justice in the world and all who seek for reconciliation. After a week of increased restrictions, so we do pray for those who lead our nation, particularly for those charged with the responsibility of enforcing peace and justice and the new restrictions. So we pray for an attitude of grace and mercy among all of us. That people may be obedient to the new laws. We do bring before you in particular those who are vulnerable or isolated. Those who struggle in particular with the new restrictions lord in your mercy hear our prayer and father we bring before you now those known to us individually who suffer in body mind or spirit naming in our hearts those people We ask that you would pour out upon them the healing oil of your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who grieve, particularly those who have lost loved ones recently. Pray for the funeral of Evelyn Mafanwi Hodges today. We ask that you would be with that family. We pray too for all the other families with whom we're engaging at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we lift before you, Heavenly Father, the day that we have ahead of us, all the plans and intentions that we have where we submit to you and ask that you will lead us. We ask that we may reach the end of the day, having been faithful to your call upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So to today's collect. Lord God, who gave to Lancelot Andrews many gifts of your Holy Spirit, making him a man of prayer and a pastor of your people. Perfect, perfect in us that which is lacking in your gifts of faith to increase it, of hope to establish it, of love to kindle it, that we may live in the light of your grace and glory, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Uh, the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Well, it's been good to have you with me. I can't see you, but you can see me. Um, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day whenever you're watching this and look forward to catching up with you soon.